Okay, so how do we make map tail recursive? Interesting. So we have map, which is this. How do we make it tail recursive? The idea is, let me do a little separation, tail recursive map. Okay, so we have the original algorithm. I'm actually going to copy paste the shorter version just so we kind of have something smaller. Okay, the basic idea is that the problem is that we are, um, the reason this is not tail recursive is because we are um, processing the rest of the list and then adding it to uh, the new list. And the idea is to kind of separate these two ideas uh, into two. So what are these two ideas? The idea is one, you um, you kind of you want to build a pipeline that will construct the list and apply the Fs to all the elements. So instead of doing um, function calls that are not tail recursive, what you would do is you can go through the elements of the list and build a new function that will operate on essentially build build the um, apply function f uh, backwards because if you do it let me give you th the first example so this is map wrong like map implemented incorrectly so one way of making the code tail recursive but it's not map it's actually because it works backwards so i'm going to call it pam map backwards so pam what pam does is um, rather than to make this tail recursive uh, what we could do is we could um, let me think we could define a pam iter right that takes the accumulated value and takes the list and then um, what we do is when we call pam um, Meter. We keep building Okay, I'm going to explain what I'm doing. Okay. So one thing that happens a lot in recursive algorithms is you you create um an internal function uh, and then we use that to to represent let me make sure all the the, the parentheses are correctly okay and what is this for this is for that uh, okay and now finally i do pam iter and then i call accumulator and the list the list initialized with the empty list and finally this is this and if i call it if i call pam Okay, so if I call Pam, 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 one, two, three. Okay. Okay. If I call Pam, I'm going to explain what it's, how I implemented it. But if I call Pam, which would be the naive way of, of trying to implement map uh, in a tail recursive way. Notice that the outermost tail call is pamator. So now this is tail is this is tail recursive. Um, so if I call map, uh, it shows the values this way. And if I show show if I call pamator, if I call pam, uh, the val the list is reverse. So why is it reverse? Well, let's see. First, we need to understand how pam works. Uh, the way PEM works is um, because we don't want to apply, we don't want to do a call. Where is it? We don't want to do a call first. Where is the call? Here we're doing the, the recursive call and then we're doing something with cons. So we don't want to do that. We want the recursive call to be the last one. So therefore we move the cons to inside a temporary variable, which we define as a parameter of PEM meter. Okay, so parameter just contains one variable, 
which is akin to what you would have in a loop if you have a loop variable, you know, a variable, a temporary variable that is only there to be updated by the loop. Think of, let's say you want to compute the average, um, or if you want to compute the summation of all of the elements of an array, what you would have would be, you know, something like a variable that you keep updating inside of the body of a loop, like, have four x in da 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 right and then you would have something like um sum plus equal plus equal a of x right zero to n okay and you would um add all the contents of the array so this sum is a temporary variable that only exists for the loop right um the way you replicate this idea in uh, recursive code is you just define a temp internal function uh, that has one parameter uh, and you pass the parameter which would be equivalent to the sum so it has basically your local variables will become parameters and then l is going to be what you're iterating on right so this is ba basic idea so if we are updating all the elements of the list why not keep the accumulator to be the list as we update it. But the problem, as you can see, so when you call it here, you do a cons with whatever you've had already accumulated, and you call f of the first list, and then you call pemeter, and so you 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 keep you know you keep making your accumulator bigger, and you make the the rest of the list, so you keep making the list smaller. So eventually, you get to a point where the list is empty, and in which case, you just return what you've accumulated. It's a very common pattern of functional programming. Uh, so we have to initialize the list with the empty list. So somehow you have to initialize this value. Um, the problem is if you call pemim, pem, it reverses the list. So how do we get the best of both worlds, right? So what we would like is to have some algorithm similar to this, uh, but that keeps the order correct. Okay, so maybe what we want to do is kind of fix PAM so that it fixes the order, right? So how could we do this? Well, the problem is that we're adding uh, the accumulated values right now, right? As we are going through the list, we're adding the elements. So first we see two and we add it to a list that is empty. So that's why it appears here. Then we see 7.2. Now the accumulated value has a list with just 2.2, it becomes a list with 7.2 and 2.2, right? Because we do cons, we always add it to the left. If we had some way of adding to the right, that would be the simplest, but there isn't because of the way that the, the list was defined. The list is defined as empty and something added to the left. So you can't add anything to the right, right? Unless you go through the whole list and you kind of defeat the purpose of the optimization. So how do we how do we go around this? Well, what we could do is maybe instead of building a list, we build something that will build the list, <laughs> right? Nothing like a level of indirection to fix it. So what we're gonna do is, okay, so instead of building the list directly, let's just build a function that builds the list, right? So, it's going to be a function that when given a list, let me call this um, the new list. It takes the new list and it calls um, cons of f with new list. Okay, so this could be something like that. So where, where we would be, um, you know, building Instead of building a list, we build a list, uh, sorry, a function that contains, that explains how to build the list in reverse. Okay, but we need to use a cum. So what, is, what are we accumulating? What we are gonna accumulate is this list value. So um, when we get to the end, we just return the accumulated value, that's still fine. But when we, so what is the accumulated value? It's going to be a function, right? That when given a list, it should add cons to it. Okay. 
So, um, so now where does Accume go? Right, we have Accume. Where is Accume? Accume. What we what is currently Accume holding? Okay, so I get the new list. I add something to it. So now I have to pass it to the old accumulator, which is the old pipeline. Okay, this is kind of what we're doing. So now we take a new lambda that when given a list, it adds a new element to it and passes that list to accumulator, which is itself another list. So how do we start this whole thing? We start with a lambda takes a lit that takes an X and returns X. Now we probably have parentheses. Pam iter. Okay, let me make sure. Ah. No, this is fine. Cons, first of the list, after the list, and then calls a cum, returns lambda. Okay, and here, rest, pam, okay. Let's see if things are better now. Oh, this is my second pam. This is map v2, okay. Okay, so now let's call map v2. Okay, this is returning a function. Ah, of course. This acum is a function, so I have to pass empty to it to initialize it. And magically it works okay so <laughs> it's not very obvious uh, the reason this works is because effectively what you're doing is you're uh, as you recurse through the list to l what you're doing is you're creating imagine you're creating a lambda I, I think i have a good slide after yeah what you're creating is a tower of lambdas so it, it goes in two stages. So in the first stage, you initialize it with a accumulator that just returns X, right? So um, when you call it the first time, you pass a list with one, two, three. When you add, and the first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna add one. So what that's gonna create is a new function that whenever given an element, which is gonna be a list, it's gonna add F to the left-hand side. Um, and then you're going to do the same as you process the list. You're going to build basically a tower of lambdas um, where the innermost is going to add, uh, it's going to not, it's not going to do anything. Then you're going to add one because you want to, you, you want to add from the inside out, right? Because again, you, you, you are not, we haven't learned how to reverse a list. Uh, so we want to do this all from first principle. How could we do this? So the idea is, okay, that's simple. We just create, it's simple and it's <laughs> not super simple, but we created this tower of lambdas um, and we say how to build a list. So in the first pass, what you're doing is you're just building this, all of these uh, lambdas nested, 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 and where the innermost is saying, okay, I just have X, I just return X, and then, uh, which is gonna be empty. Uh, and then the other one says, oh, okay, I can add the first element of the list to empty. And second one, oh, I'll add the second element of the list. And that will make, it's so that the list becomes um, in the right order. Um, because in the second, when you reach the base case, what you do is you pass an empty list that goes to um, a cum3, which unfolds and goes to a cum2. And basically what you're adding now is lots of accumes to the left. And eventually you get uh, what you would like. So, it would be nice if you could understand what's going on. Uh, I realize it's not obvious how do you create this, but I would like you to try to, if you see an example like this, which is an example, this is just a generalized pattern where you have 
recursive a recursive algorithm that is non-tail recursive you know that you can always apply this transformation and make it tail recursive okay and next what we're going to learn is that this can be generalized by a function okay but for now the only thing i would like to ask you is maybe try to do this same transformation maybe to map try to do it uh, by looking at this slide so take map right look at this slide and try to apply the transformation and see if you get where i got which is here okay try to do that okay good um hope you have a good weekend have a good one